the screen to the ring to the pen to the king where's my crown that's my bling always drama when i ring <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've got a treat for you today. I'm going to reveal how someone cheated in Discord's death by AI activity and how that led to them hacking into the company behind it, granting access to a treasure trove of dangerous opportunities. But starting at the beginning though, this whole operation was done by someone named Bob DeHacker. So for Bob DeHacker, it was just like any other day, they were bored and they were poking and prodding around in Discord's activities when they decided that maybe they should take a look at death by AI. Now if you never played death by AI before, the way that it works is pretty simple. Basically, an AI will give you a prompt saying, your grandma ran away with a knife and she's gonna kill you. And what you have to do is you have to enter in a response on what you would do in that situation to survive. And once you put in your strategy, your tactic, AI will judge your response and it will read aloud a story on what happens to you with your response and whether or not you live or die. Now I'm reenacting the situation, but while Bob the Hacker was playing the game and doing stuff, they decided to open up their Chrome console to just see what was going on between the game and Bob the Hacker's computer, and you'll notice in these network requests, oh, okay, there's just like five gazillion of them, but if we look in our network requests, there are two requests. There's a reveal request, and there's in fact two of them. Now if we click on the first reveal request, move that open. You'll notice in this request, username Steve, and you can see in the game, the strategy is I warm up and not die, and the game says I warm up and not die. Now I forgot to point out, but for you to see these specific requests, you need to be the host of the Death by AI game, and that also means that if you want to cheat in Death by AI, you need to be the host of the game, so just keep that in mind. But if we go to the response of the request, we can see that we have three different options. We have story, which says as the biting winds howled around him, Steve huddled beneath a hastily constructed snow shelter. So it's the story, and it also tells me that is survived equals false, which sounds like Shmoney Man Steve dies. Now, if we go over to my game and we click on continue, you will notice that the AI is going to say exactly what I said. Now, the quality is going to be horrendous because there's 500 things going on on my screen. It feels like I'm at a casino. But it's the same story, and if I continue, I should die and lose this round. And that is the case. But the thing that Bob the Hacker was thinking is that what if there was a way to modify this response. If we could modify this response, we can make the bot say any sort of story, but we can also make it where is survived is always true, so I always win, or is survived is always false. Which isn't really helpful, you wouldn't want to lose, but remember, we're looking at Shmoney Man Steve. This isn't my account, this is my friend playing. What if there was a way where we could always make our friends lose? And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to How to Cheat in Death by AI. But the easiest way that we're going to do this is we're going to get a Chrome extension called Requestly. Now this will be linked in the description, and what this allows us to do is intercept and modify and mock HTTP requests. This allows us to modify those requests and change how the game plays if we code things properly. Don't worry, you don't have to code on this, it's very simple. But when you open up this Chrome extension, it's going to take you to Requestly and it's going to ask you to make an account. Now you do have to make an account to use this thing, but what's even worse is that the only way that we can do this thing properly is if we use the professional seven day free trial. So when you use this, you only have seven days to cheat in the game. However, if you're brave enough to go on GitHub and compile the browser extension yourself. I have this linked in the description. But if you're brave enough, you can compile the browser extension yourself and use this for free indefinitely and not have to worry about this seven day free trial. In the description, I'm going to have this link, which is basically a link to the template that I made. And when you throw this bad boy into your browser and you open it up, you should be able to click on the button import to my rules, which will successfully import your rule, my rule. It'll import the code thing so that you can use it without having to copy and paste a whole bunch of code, okay? But when you click on this rule, you should see that there's a whole bunch of crap. Now you could get nerdy and try to understand what I did, or you can just scroll down to the script that I made and just read the comments. The main thing that you want to look at are these three things. Player name, among gussy, because I don't know why I left that in there, and is survived, true or false. These are the three parameters that you are going to change to change the outcome of the game. So to keep things simple, I want to make it where I always win, and whenever the bot reads out a response, I want it to just say among gussy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace player name with the name of my player in the game. Now you should be able to see everyone's player name in the lobby when they all join. So just, uh, I don't know, take a screenshot or note those down before you start getting up to your devious little plans. And that is going to modify every single result of the person who has the username most annoying user, which is me. Now moving down in terms of the story, you could replace this with a long winded story about how you are the absolute best. You have a massive wiener, or you can just put in complete brain rot. We, we got the bot to sing the KSI song. I think that's plenty enough. But what you could also do 
is you can completely remove this story equals among us make sure to include the comma after and when you remove this all it will do is just make sure that you win every single time which there are cases when you play the game the bot will say like Amiya met their end as the building crumbled in the end Amiya survived <laughs> <laughs> I think that's probably the best thing to do in my opinion but regardless just to show you how this thing works I'm gonna leave it as among us and I'm always gonna win make sure to save the rule go into your discord click on the extension and you should see HTTP rules just go to recently used and pin this bad boy so it'll show up in the pinned rules and make sure it is enabled or else nothing is going to happen. Now you'll notice that when you enable it the cheats don't work on the current round you need to set it up before everyone submits all their answers. So anyways once you enable the cheat and you enter in your completely 100% real answer the cheat should take effect. Most annoying user tries to and what does the AI bot say? Among us and I survived. But kaboom ladies and gentlemen we now know how to cheat in a discord activity which is only as valuable as your creativity with it in terms of trolling your friends but bob the hacker was not satisfied about this they wanted to learn more if this death by ai game is broken in this way how broken is the rest of death by ai what potential disruption could happen if someone hacked into death by ai and spoiler alert there's actually a lot now if you don't know death by ai is made by playroom it shows at the start screen but the thing with playroom is that they're actually a service that allows you to build multiplayer games and if you look at their features they specifically focus on discord specifically discord activities so we can assume that death by ai is run on this playroom kit website and bob the hacker decided you know what i think it's time for me to become a developer and get started for free so bob the hacker made an account and to sign in you need to provide your email and it'll send you an email giving you this big long link to sign in and a little hint that you'll need but this big long massive link has firebase in it now i had no idea but if you don't know what firebase is it's technically considered as a backend as a service. What does that mean to normal people? It just does a lot of website stuff, but Firebase has something called Firestore, which is an online database using Firestore, Firebase, database... It's an online database, which will be important for later. But when you create a developer account on Playroom, everything's pretty simple. You can create your own game, you can make it a Discord activity, do hosting, there's nothing out of the ordinary here. But then Bob the Hacker did the most unthinkable thing on the planet. They opened up their Chrome console, the network tab, and they refreshed the page, and while they were poking and prodding around, they found this accounts request, which sends a request to identitytoolkit.googleapis, again, Firebase, accounts lookup, and then it gives you a key. Let's, ex uh, let's, sh let's shrink it. There we go. The key equals this big number here. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys. I could pretend I know what happens next and explain it as if this is common sense to everyone. I have no f***ing idea what Bob the Hacker did. They pulled this magic link that they sent to me that I still don't understand, but it's to Google APIs, Identity Toolkit, Relying Party, Git Project Config, and they attach this key at the end. Now at this point, I'm borderline confused, but we now know that the Firebase project name is called Playroom-Production. I hate to be a little bit more of a nerd than uh, Bob the Hacker, but but you could actually see what the name was if you just looked at that login link. But with this Firebase name, Bob the Hacker thought, what if there was a way that I could access Playroom's database? What you can do is you can make API calls to Firestore, which allows you to access and get data from a database, but also write information to a database. But what they did is they copied this and then they attached it to the end of this, which is just kind of like Firebase's default structure in terms of a database. So you have your projects, you have the name of your project, which we learned is Playroom-Prod, then there's databases, default, documents, and then in this case, it has cities and LA. However, it would probably make sense if they followed a very simple structure that most Firebase projects use, where in their documents, they have a users folder, and it's filled with a whole bunch of users. And using that, plus coding knowledge, which I don't have, they stumbled across and put together this big link here, where they're basically contacting Google's Firestore, specifically the Playroom Production Project, and they're looking in their databases for users, but instead of trying to, like, like find out everyone else's information because who cares bob the hacker thought what if i could make my account become admin i would have thought the exact same thing to be honest but what bob the hacker did is they went back to the same request that we looked at to get this firebase key and they just went to the response and they looked under users and there's something called the local id which is kind of like your username and all they did is they just copied this big chunk of text and they pasted that big number at the end and they clicked on send now you'll notice uh no text to speech the thing ain't working and that's because it got patched. But don't worry, that's what screenshots are for, baby. But you can see from the screenshot that Bob the Hacker sent a get request to Google's API for Firestore.
store, Playroom Production, and they had their user at the end, and it returns a whole bunch of information, specifically the fact that their role was a developer. Now, Bob the Hacker Thunk, what if I just select this and I change it to admin? And that is exactly what they did. They basically just made a patch request, they copied all this information, changed the role to be admin, and they clicked on the big send button. Bob the Hacker now has the role of admin. We have two things to look forward to. The first thing is that this is where everything went downhill for Death by AI and Playroom. And the second thing to look forward to is that the rest of this video isn't going to be as confusing as it just was. But this is how the Playroom developer portal looks like normally, on a normal user account. You can only see your games, it says developer, and you can modify your game and stuff. But Bob the Hacker had something a little bit stranger. They actually had the ad... Ah! It doesn't say developer, it says admin on the top left. And when you're just on a normal user account, the only games that you can see are the games that you make using Playroom. But Bob the Hacker, when they went to see their games, um, they couldn't just see their own games, they could also see every other person's game, like CSS in the Dark, Red Brick Test Game, and even the hit game Among Us 2. Bob the Hacker could access it all. But this also included the game Death by AI, and what Bob the Hacker could do is access a whole bunch of things. And what type of havoc can you cause? Well, we're gonna start with the very simple stuff and then move up to completely blowing up the whole platform, it feels like. But what Bob the Hacker could do is they could change a whole bunch of the Discord bot credentials. So they could just completely reset the bot token and Death by AI would just not work. There's also some triggers, which we'll get to later. But not only could they disable Death by AI and just change all this stuff to break it, uh, but they could also go to the game's hosting and they could upload their own game Game. They could change Death by AI to be whatever game they decide to program and put on there. You can make it link you to a YouTube video, uh, maybe a, a really bad video on a different website. However, there's a lot more of a pressing issue that any moron like myself could abuse to do a lot of damage. Because remember looking back at this dashboard, what are these triggers talking about? Well, these are basically things that you can enable that will send messages to people when they first play Death by AI, and you can see that I could edit these messages and I can also turn it on and off. So I could enable this trigger and I could edit the message where death by AI, the bot itself, will send a DM to people when you first play the game and it'll say, hey, thank you for playing death by AI. You can get free death by AI premium and five gazillion dollars by visiting this obviously not a scam website. Using this, you could send people a big scam and it would be sent by the real death by AI bot. And just in case you weren't aware, death by AI can send you a direct message because when you authorize the bot when you first play this game, it'll show up in that little authorization pop-up that the bot can send a DM to you. But gamers, I kind of saved the best for last, because here's the thing, with these triggers right now, for any bad thing to happen, people need to actually play the game again. What if there was a way I could send a message to every single person that has ever played Death by AI? Man, that would suck. And it turns out in this screenshot, a little bit of a clue is, uh, sticking out at us. It's been in our face the whole time. It's the fact that the Chrome Network tab is open. And if you look in the Network tab, there's a request that you can open up where it tells you the description of the bot, it tells you what the bot's ID is. But you can see in the Discord fields, we can see the Discord client ID. You can see the client secret. In the screenshot, all this stuff was just completely blank. But if you look at the network tab, this was the whole entire client secret. In fact, there's also the Discord bot token. The whole thing in plain text. And using this Discord bot token, I can fully control the Discord bot, the death by AI bot. If someone was super evil, they could use this bot token to make the Discord bot DM every single person that has played Death by AI that still has it authorized. And to make things even worse, by the way, <laughs> remember all these games that Bob the Hacker had access to? Considering that they could see the client ID secret and bot token of every single one of those games if they had a Discord bot related to it, this could have been a pretty nasty disaster if Bob the Hacker was trying to do something evil. But when it comes to finding bugs like this, instead of causing a big havoc, Bob the Hacker decided to do the good thing, and they contacted the developers of Playroom about this issue so they at least had a chance to fix it. And ladies and gentlemen, the Playroom developers, the people behind Death by AI, did a damn good job, let me tell you. In less than 20 minutes, this whole admin exploit was fixed. Uh, I'm not finished. Bob the Hacker did a little bit of a Discord Avengers team up with good old XYZ Eva, which, if you watched a lot of my videos, you know XYZ Eva is the the person that hacked into a whole bunch of Discord bots to find vulnerabilities, and I've covered it in a couple of videos. They found another vulnerability in a whopping two minutes. When you go to Playroom and you refresh the page, there's a request that gets made 
to dev.joinplayroom.com slash API slash game question mark user ID and then it puts in the user ID. What if we replace my user ID with the user ID of the owner of the death by AI bot? Again, this happened in like three minutes. Uh, they got the new Discord bot token. Anyways, fortunately for me, I don't have to censor anything because if I try doing this myself, message, game's not found. So they did fix this, but considering that they had this simple of a vulnerability, it makes me ask the question, I wonder what other Discord activities have gaping security holes like death by AI and specifically the back end that they use Playroom. I just want to say a big thanks to Bob the Hacker though for finding this and being patient enough to explain it to a moron like me. By some modern day miracle, I might have explained it in a way that is not confusing. I hope. <laughs> Anyways, bye bye. I love you. Mwah.